So in the previous lesson, we got to understand that when a conducting wire containing several atoms is connected to a battery, which is a source of EMF, charges are compelled or forced to move. Now the movement of these charges constitute what you call electric current. Now in this video, we are going to focus on voltage, power and energy. Now to move an electron in a conductor in a particular direction requires some form of work to be done. And this work is done by the external EMF or in this case, the battery. So let's assume that we have a voltage source connected across an element. So we have this to be the voltage VAB, which is expressed across this element. Now the voltage VAB between the two points AB in this electric circuit is said to be the energy or the work needed to move a unit charge from A to B. And we can express this mathematically as VAB equals the W the Q and that is measured in volts. So W here is the energy, the energy in joules, and then Q is the charge in coulombs. So in simple terms, we can define the voltage or potential difference as the energy required to move a unit charge through an element and is basically measured in volts. Now, like electric current, a constant DC voltage is represented by a capital V and a sinusoidally time varying voltage, which is simply called an AC voltage, is represented by a small V. So we have a constant, a constant DC voltage that is represented by a capital V and then a sinusoidally time varying voltage, simply an AC voltage, is represented by small v. So this is small v and then that is capital V. So a typical example of a constant DC voltage source is a battery and that of an AC voltage source can be an electric electric generator electric generator now it is very important to know how much power a device can handle now electric power in itself so we have this to be voltage and then we are moving on to electric power so electric electric power so electric power in itself is the time rate of absorbing or dissipating energy and that is measured in watt so electric power is measured in watt and we say that it is the time rate of absorbing or dissipating energy now we can express electric power mathematically as the w the t now for this expression according to chain rule we can express P equals the W dt as the W dq times dq dt. Now you can realize that the W dq is the work done or the energy needed to move a unit charge through an element and that is the voltage V. And then dq dt represents the time rate of change of charge and that is I, which is the current. Therefore, we can say that the power absorbed by an element or the power supplied by an element is given by the products of the voltage across it and the current flowing through it. So that is P equals VI. Now, this P is a time varying quantity. This P is a time varying quantity and hence we call it the instantaneous power instantaneous power so we can explain this as the power at any instance of time in the circuit the power at any instance of time in the circuit 
Now, this power can either be positive or negative. Now, if the power is positive, if the power is positive, if P is positive, then what this primarily means is that power has been absorbed power has been absorbed by the element power has been absorbed by the element that is if p is positive and then if p is negative then it means that power has been supplied power has been supplied by the element power has been supplied by the element if p is negative now how do we even know whether the power is positive or negative how do we even know whether the power is positive or negative now in simple things if the current if the current leaves the positive terminal of the voltage source through the element then power is positive and hence and hence element absorbs power so that is very simple if current leaves the positive terminal of the voltage source then power is positive and hence element absorbs power again if current leaves the negative terminal of the voltage source then power is negative and hence and hence element supplies element supplies power so that is very simple to clearly understand this let's consider two circuits so we are going to consider two circuits so for the first one we have the terminals a b positive negative and then we have this to be VAB and then we have current I leaving the positive terminal so that is circuit A and then for the next circuit we have voltage across this element this is terminal A terminal B positive negative VAB here we have current I leaving the negative terminal so this is circuit B so for circuit A since current leaves the positive terminal of the voltage source through the element power here is said to be positive and thus P is equal to plus VAB times I and the element is said to have absorbed power now for circuit B, since the current leaves the negative terminal of the voltage source through the element, power is said to be negative, that is negative VAB times I. And the element here is said to have supplied power to the circuit. Now one other important thing we need to take notice of is the fact that the total power supplied to a circuit must balance the total power absorbed. Thus, the law of conservation of energy must be obeyed in any electric circuit. For this reason, the algebraic sum of power in a circuit at any instance of time must be zero. That is, the summation of P at any instance of time in the circuit must be equal to zero. Again, the energy absorbed. So, energy the energy absorbed or supplied 
by an element by an element from time t naught to t okay t naught to t is given by w or better still you can say e or w is equal to the integral of p the t from t naught to t you can express this as the integral of v i b t from t naught to t so that is the energy absorbed or supplied by an element from t naught to t now energy is defined as the ability or the capacity to do work now we need to also understand that the electric utility company measures energy in terms of watt hour. So, in case you are solving any question, one watt hour is equal to three thousand six hundred joules. So, the formula energy, or better still, capital E, or better still, W is equal to power times time. And the unit is watt hour so now let's move on as we consider a few questions